You're looking at Lauren Witzke. Now, he looks as if obviously he doesn't like women voting. In regards to women voting, you know, that was the worst thing that ever happened to America too. Look at us now. Women overwhelmingly vote. Um, on their emotions. Now, if just our husbands and landowners were voting, we'd be in a much better place than we are now. Georgia Guidestones was an example of that. And uh, thank God they're gone. As I Rodeo think it was lightning. Could have been. Like, I thing. think it was lightning. So I don't believe the videos they put out. There's no timestamp on them. It sure. was like super lure. It was sketchy. I think they're doing a mass cover up to hide that God said, uh uh, and shot a laser or a lightning bolt down that is that down. is my story and i'm sticking to it Listen. i believe it i don't really know how much you know about me but i'm probably the most vocal anti-children transitioning person on the internet it's what i'm right. all, I, it's well i, I let, I let you speak the best thing you can do for us is I, grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you you know russia is uh, a Christian nationalist nation, are actually Orthodox Christian, I'm mm. Russian Orthodox. So I identify more with Russian, uh, with Putin's Christian values than I do with Joe Biden. You know, like I said, there is a party for free market capitalism and transgenderism and liberalism. That's called the Libertarian Party. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations, a new world order. This crusade, this War on terrorism uh, is going to take a while. He came, he saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> we tortured some folks. to these unnatural men, machine men, with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines, you are not cattle, you are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate, only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. And the pod has been parked. Ladies and gentlemen, it's episode 46 of Dave versus Goliath. Thank you for being here. I truly appreciate it. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different today. Uh, normally, we like to come live, but due to some scheduling stuff, we're going to do a little pre-record, uh, but you know, it'll drop at the same time, be on all the same channels. So if you're seeing this or hearing this, please leave your boy a nice review. Uh, four or five stars. Anything less than that, go after yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, really would appreciate that. Uh, don't forget, I'm on The System is Down every Wednesday with Dan Smots at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, and we'll be doing that uh, every week. But on to the goodness, my friends. We have a great guest tonight. Um, maybe the first libertarian, uh, excuse me, non-libertarian that's been on the show. Um, but there's some overlap, and we'll get into that. Maybe find some common ground, and maybe uh, have some healthy debate. But uh, she was the 2020 Republican nominee for U.S. Senate from Delaware. She's the host of Crosstalk News and the president and executive producer at the Stu Peters Network. Uh, which uh, produced recently the viral sensation died suddenly about the uh, the non World Health Health Organization approved narrative surrounding the old jibbity jab. Uh, and coming up, she's got a brand new documentary called Slave Nation. Let's take a look at that. Well, we've been telling you about Democrats' plan to expand the IRS with nearly 90,000 new agents. The administration's own Treasury Department has said this funding would be used to hire 87,000 new IRS agents. Do you really need your job posting to say you're willing to use deadly force? My name is Pema Motehede. I have not paid any federal income taxes for 30 years. International bankers succeeded in stemming America by the Federal Reserve and the federal income tax. We knew that Congress was stupid. The proof is it goes all the way back to 1909 when they instituted this idea of an income tax. Do you pay your taxes? Yes, I do. Why is it with all the technological advances that we have, we are not all prosperous. So I'm going to show you a real plan to drain the Washington, D.C. swamp. 
Okay. Why don't they try to put me in prison? Folks, I don't mean to be bragging, but the truth of the matter is, you are listening to the number one enemy of the IRS. Do you pay your taxes? Of course, that's besides the point. I voted for Barack, I voted for Hillary. That's an American thing to do. Woo, I love it. Let's bring her in. Ladies and gentlemen, Lauren Witzke. Lauren, what's happening? Hey, how's it going? Thanks so much for having me on. I'm a huge fan of uh, your Twitter and uh, a lot of fun comments you've made where we completely agree on a lot of things. Um, we yeah, sure we do. Have, that was Slave Nation. So we went a little different route. Uh, you talked to, about Died Suddenly, uh, where it ended up getting over 30 million views in tw- and translated into 12 different languages. I truly wow. believe that we killed uh, the clot shot. Uh, with that, I know that their numbers had to have gone down their vaccination numbers. Um, you know, it was it was a global conspiracy to get a jab in every single arm. And I really feel like um, died suddenly really uh, it brought awareness to all that and really touched the hearts and minds of people and even convicted some doctors that started coming forward saying, OK, I knew something was wrong um, with Slave Nation. We went a little different because I have been befriending the Libertarian Party. I went to a Ron Paul rally a couple weeks ago and I fell in love with this new um, party that seems to be arising. I used to fight with libertarians all the time uh, mm-hmm. because I thought they were, you know, as just might as well have just been Democrats, you know, like far left, progressive, Antifa sure. Democrats, a lot of them, like mm-hmm. anarchists, essentially, um, but not in a good way. You know, it was, uh, but I've gotten to know them and I'm fascinated. And I met Paimon Montehede. Uh, he's the one that we're doing the show on or the, the documentary on. Fascinating mm-hmm. person. Hasn't paid taxes in 30 years. Amazing. And yeah, they can't arrest him. Like, that's the thing. They've been investigating him. They've sent people to his house. They've threatened him, all this stuff. But they cannot charge him because he. It is there's no federal law that says you have to pay federal taxes. Mm-hmm. And nobody knows that. Only yeah. federal employees are required to pay taxes according to the Bill of Rights and the United States Constitution. All that. They are the only ones that are supposed to pay taxes, federal taxes. Uh, and, you know, Americans just pay because they um basically sign their confession form you know what i'm saying when every day when you go to file every year when you go to file your taxes you're filing that confession form saying i owe you this much Mm -hmm. and uh apparently there's a law against that and i've been learning a lot and um met some really cool people along the way paymon being one of them the most fascinating thing is that you know i i only believe what like i know like what i investigate and see for myself and he like he has been under investigation for 13 years, uh, he hasn't paid in 30 and they can't charge him because there's no, he kept telling him, show me the law, show me the law that says I pay federal taxes and they cannot show him the law. Very fascinating. You can actually find out wow. about him at freedomlawschool.org. Cool. Yeah. I'm excited about that. I wanted to start with that because I feel like that's some real good common ground there and yeah. the federal reserve and the IRS and the income tax. I mean, I don't know what your position is. Maybe you want to just kind of rein it in and get some tax reductions and things. I mean, we'll settle for whatever, but I like the idea of abolishing all of those things. Sounds like he would probably agree with that. Yeah. And, you know, the IRS isn't a legitimate institution. Um, It was kind of put there just to scare people into paying. And then we ended up, I know as Christians, they were taking our money and funding uh, Planned Parenthood's abortion mills. Uh, Now they're taking our money, sending it over to Ukraine. No American signed up you know, to work, you know, 50 hours a week to have up to 30, 40 percent of their income sent overseas to a foreign country. We spend billions and billions of dollars a year in foreign aid, sending it to foreign countries. When we have a border crisis ourselves, we have a drug epidemic crisis. We have just a a spiritual crisis. We we as Americans are in crisis. We are in a recession. Mm -hmm. We are struggling. And they still take up to 40% of our income and send it overseas to foreign countries. And it is a disgrace. And nobody, nobody agreed to it. Nobody signed up for this. Uh, nobody even voted on this. You know, it was just implemented and we never had a choice. So far, I haven't disagreed with anything that you've said yet. So I feel like we're off on a, to a really great start. Um, so let's take, you had a great run in 2020. I want to take it back to that kind of for a minute because you've done a lot in the past just couple of years taking your journeys, going over some, some cool landscapes, but you started with, correct me if I'm wrong, but the most, the, the most successful Republican senatorial run in Delaware history. Is that right? With more than 50,000 more votes than the 
any previous Republican had got, correct? Yes. We even out, well, outvoted or garnered more votes than Christine O'Donnell, who had millions of dollars in the bank from the RNC funding her. We mm -hmm. did it on a shoestring budget. And um, we ended up garnering 50,000 more votes than any other Delaware U.S. Senate candidate in Delaware history. And, you know, and we did it on a grassroots like uh, it was a completely grassroots campaign. RNC yeah. didn't support me. The they really, they stonewalled you. The RNC, the Delaware RNC said, no, we're not interested, even though you had the popular support, wouldn't, wouldn't endorse you once, once you got the gig. Right. Yeah. No, uh, no, <laughs> they endorsed the guy who didn't even, sh who was living in Georgia and hadn't even shown up to campaign. <laughs> that's who they endorsed. Like he wasn't even in the state campaigning. Wow. Um, yeah. And Just whatever the safe bet is that doesn't ruffle any feathers, I guess. Exactly. And you know, that's fine. It's the, it's grand old party. You know what I'm saying? It's mostly made up of people that are stuck in their ways and that's fine, but that's why we keep losing. And that's why they keep losing. And, you know, they literally had to like harvest tons and tons of mail in ballots in order to beat me. And that's something to be proud of, especially since you're going up against an incumbent Democrat who had been there for years. He had millions of dollars mm -hmm. in the bank. He had big pharma backing him. He had everything. And it still required him to collect a ton of mail-in ballots in order to win and beat me. And, you know, that's great. Um, that I'm very proud of that run. It was probably one of the coolest years of my life. And it was such a pleasure. And I got to meet, you know, I grew up in Delaware. I love Delaware. It's my home. But I got to meet the people, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know how long you've been in Delaware, but I remember in the 90s living like it was like I could just walk around. I'd take my bike and I'd drive around, um, go out in developments, go in the woods and stuff like that. And it was perfectly safe. Like I'd come home when the streets like light, street lights mm -hmm. came on. And that's how Delaware used to be. Now it's just crime ridden. Uh, people, everybody's like all my friends are on drugs or have died from drugs or still struggling. It's just horrible what has yeah. happened to our state under this leadership. And I, I wanted to change. I really, really wanted to bring awareness to the opioid epidemic, the mm -hmm. immigration issue and how it's related and the destruction of the nuclear family. And, you know, that's what I did. I ran on what I believed and I did not back down. And I think people appreciated that. It wasn't yeah. maybe not everybody agreed with me, but I think they appreciated somebody fighting, not uh, like kind of laying down and dying when they got a little heat or anything like that. And I think I, I wanted to set an example for other people um, who want to run for office. Like if I can run for office, you can run for office and you can mm -hmm. win because just go out there and fight for what you believe in. You don't have to apologize or kneel to the mob. Um, you know, I, I remember one day specifically it was, saddest day of my life. I remember going and watching as they tore down Caesar Rodney, went up there to try and protest it, try to stop it. It was it was the most I remember them taking down that statue and thinking, wow, this is how it begins. Like this is like I know I'm going to remember this moment for the rest of my life because it's not going to get any better than this, because yeah. we are at a point now where they are taking down our historical monuments. They are erasing our history for the sake of social justice or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, they didn't even, he signed her Declaration of Independence. You know, he is like a legacy in Delaware. And it was just a really sad day. There were some really good ups and there were some really lows. Um, it was a dark time in Delaware. We had the BLM riots um, in Wilmington where they burned down a sports goods store, a small business. Uh, they looted the streets. People got hurt. And it was just it was a very, if you think back, that was a crazy year. <laughs> People were locked down. Um, I remember one lady got arrested for opening her hair salon or her spa. Like, right crazy the cops are hunting down people they were enforcing mass mandates stuff that was like never put into law again stuff that nobody ever voted for and right. you know i just i felt like we needed somebody who would fight back or at least set an example and embolden others to fight back so i still haven't heard anything that i disagree with i just want to put that on record and i love that and i want you also to know that you got my vote um Thank because you. of course and i told this to people publicly who were upset about it who might say all the worst things about you um, but I've been called those all those things, Nazi, white supremacist, QAnon, all the things. So like I always have to take a couple looks at that. Yeah, um, I but I was just telling some guys today, like I would rather have if all if she is all the bad things that you're saying, but also is anti-Fed, anti-war, anti-war on drugs, these things. Uh, let me get to the war on drugs in a minute. But if, she, if there's all this overlap, um, that's good enough for me against deep state stooge Chris Coons, yeah. warmongering Chris Coons. You know what I'm saying? Even if all of the things that they say about you are true, which I don't think that they are. I would still take that right. with a, with a, with a no nonsense, uh, 
conservative fiscal policy and, you know, foreign policy. Give me that and, and mean tweets. Um, but I kind of wanted to get your perspective of how your view on the role of government or the electoral process has changed since 2020. I'm, I'm guessing you maybe you're disenfranchised or you're, are you, have you given up on electoral politics or, I mean, even with your 50,000 more votes than any Republican, which is great and historic and a victory in itself, that's in Delaware, you're still 20 points from Chris Coons. So it's like, we could have all the Republicans, all the independents, all these libertarians come out and you would still fall short of these demons. So it's like, is that the way forward? Do we just kind of use the vehicles? What do you think? Well, here's the thing. Delaware is no longer a state. It's a corporation. (laughs) That's what it is. And, you know, the electoral uh, process, real elections don't really exist in states like that because it's always going to be rigged in favor of those corporations. Uh, You know, the Delaware Bar, you know, they came from my family, too. Um, The Delaware Bar ended up not letting my brother um, into the Delaware Bar, despite passing the test the first time, one of the hardest tests in the country. And they didn't let him in because his sister ran for Senate because they knew, like, you know, anybody who supported the United States Constitution or was, you know, uh, related to conservatism in any way have no place in the Delaware Bar because they purely exist to exist uh, to protect big pharma and they elect their politicians based on that too like okay is this person going to protect Pfizer and everybody and BlackRock mm-hmm. and everybody who's incorporated here if not they have to get out so they can't be in it so it, it really is a club um, and we're just not in it and you know I, I accept that and I recognize that and, you know, I, I don't want it to discourage people from still fighting, though, even though Delaware has a supermajority. We now have a, uh, a drag queen and a transgender in office. Um, and a lot of I know the black community didn't even know she was a transgender, um, honestly, or he was a transgender when he ran for office. And a lot of people were, you know, people just don't know. It's a lot of uneducated voters going out. And, you know, it's just. Um, I, <sighs> Are you familiar with Deshana Uniel, the woman who just got elected? here uh is she the one that was like the communist one like or was endorsed by the socialist party of delaware or we working know? families party which is essentially the communist caucus of the delaware uh democratic party but she is a quote-unquote um uh, black non-binary uh they she, pr- she wants to go by they but she's got not one but two trans children one who she started putting in dresses at age four the other one, I'm not sure of the story, but she also, we did an episode on this a couple back. I couldn't believe it. I was so triggered. She was, she uh, achieved something. I think this was precedent, but she got Medicaid to pay for her son's transitioning. Like she was the first one to get the state to be like, yeah, we'll take care of that for you. And now she's, she's an elected official. She gets paid to legislate for Delawareans lives. Um, you know, ni- nice salary and benefit package and, you know. This is a woman who was on welfare just a couple months ago asking for people to help for help to pay her lights like, damn, that's where we're at. (laughs) That's where we're at here. Um, Yep, That is where we're at. And it's almost like it's pure madness, too. Um, And we as voters don't have a say because, you know, they control the inner cities. They can harvest ballots from anywhere. And, you know, we as Republicans, I know Donald Trump has talked about how we need to start ballot harvesting, but it's different. It's not the same. They Democrats can go into an apartment complex in the inner city and walk out with 500 ballots. We are in the country. We are in development, spread mm-hmm. out. Conservatives, you, homeowners, landowners, we are spread out. If we try to ballot harvest, it's not even going to be remotely close because they have the inner cities and the apartment complexes and everything all together and where we own property and we are out of the cities. And, you know, it's a way longer drive. You have to go drive five miles to get to your first voter. It's just way different. I don't think mm-hmm. it's going to work. Um, do I think we can come back from this? No, nah, it's going to be tough. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be very tough. And, you know, I, I thought about running against Carper uh, just just to give him hell, um, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And I was just like, well, do I want to take another loss? Because I know that's what's coming. But because it's rigged, they won't they are never going to let me win. They are never going to let me win. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but does that mean I give up? Does that mean I give up? Because then that means they definitely win. So it's just the approach like, hey, do you think that um, elections still matter? A lot of people don't think they do. I, I pray that maybe something we have a turnaround where um, the electoral process is repaired, um, where ballot harvesting is banned and people have to show up to vote. That is the only chance we have is if it ever becomes so people have to show up to vote in person um, on Election Day. That is the only way we can try to win, you know? Yeah.
especially on, on the larger scale. The Mises caucus has taken, we have a 20 year plan. And I know that that's people that want something fixed in the next election cycle are not going to like that. But ours, our plan is to really just go after winnable races, mostly ones that don't have party affiliation, uh, city council, town council, mayor, sheriff, things like that. So that you can maybe just start to nullify some of the awful policy of the past hundred years or so. <laughs> Yeah, I've been watching what's happened with the Mises Caucus, and I love it. I love the coup that went on. Uh, great. I, I like Dave Smith. I think he's great. I think that one of – I really started to like him during COVID. Uh, he put out this tweet when they were t pushing for vaccine mandates. He's like, if the Libertarian Party exists for something, this is it. We have mm -hmm. got – he drew a line in the sand, like basically we have got to stand up to these mandates or what good are we for? And, you know, I think he's a very smart man. I really enjoyed. Um, I like the direction that the libertarians are going. Might be a 20 year mm -hmm. plan, but at least you have a plan. Yeah. The Republican party doesn't. We don't have anything. We have no plan. We're just kind of floating along, um, beating up on other Republicans and, you know, getting more George Bush um, impersonators in office. And it's a shame. And. You know, it's just that's why they keep losing. You know, it was supposed to be a red wave in 2022. Yeah. We were supposed to just demolish it. It was a nothing. It was nothing. We barely took back the House. We lost the mm. Senate. Um, it was just a disgrace. And it's because they yeah. have no vision, no vision. At least you guys have a vision. And I we, we yes, right. And we can actually we, we're not going to win many elections. That's absolutely true. But we that's a criticism that gets lobbied against us from like larger conservative names. It's like, but you're not conserving anything either. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure you would agree with that. It's just like, you're not abortion, you know, the, the nuclear family, like what in, in what area have you conserved anything over the past hundred years? Um, but you mentioned this kind of bushing, <laughs> the Bush era effect. Um, yeah. Check this out. He's not great as far as campaign skills. He may get there, but he doesn't have them mm -hmm. yet. Uh, and I, who's running his campaign? The Bushes are all tangled up with him. Uh, Bush that can raise him a billion dollars, get him all kinds of money. The Jeb Bush, Bush, Jeb Bush, George Bush. Yeah, they're great. Carl Rove involved. Carl Rove. Will be the, Carl Rove is involved. I assume he'll be the coach on the field. I think he is. But do you know that Carl, he's been advising the Sanders? He's been Carl advising. Rove. So there it is. You got the new conservative savior of everything who's going to reestablish order and respectability of the office, Ron DeSantis, yep. being backed by the Bushes and Carl <laughs> Rove, baby. How do you feel about that? Well, see, I moved to, I, like, I didn't, I don't, I, I'm still a Delaware resident. I came to Florida trying to kind of get away. The feds came after my bank account. They came after me after January 6th. They came after my family. It kind of drove mm -hmm. me out. Um, they shut down my bank account. So I came down to Florida. And it's like COVID never happened here. People are living their lives normally. It's a beautiful sunshine state. Nothing shut down. Everything's doing well. So I respect what he did with COVID. I do. Right. However, on a national level, I don't think he has what it takes. He literally signed his first piece of legislation for Florida in a foreign country. That is a fact. Like, what oh. kind of president does that? And um, it's, it's a fact. He went over to Israel and signed legislation over there for Florida, you know, and that just goes to show that probably has some globalist ties. He has some links. Uh, Jeb endorsed him right away. That's concerning because right. if Jeb Bush is endorsing you, something's wrong here. This is a Yale boy. He, he was the guy at Guantanamo Bay doing the most awful shit. I mean, I don't know how much more deep state, like born out of the deep state it gets right. yeah. than, than, yeah. than this guy who's portraying, you know, he's playing the role of, and again, I know that he was cool and the best governor during COVID. I will absolutely say that Florida looks pretty sweet, but would it be out of the realm of possibility to just maybe think for a second that like the deep state might have good guys and bad guys that they aim you at and like, Oh, we're going to elevate this guy here. He's going to come up and re you know, just give people faith in government again. Right. Yeah. That would be the worst thing that Ron DeSantis could do. Um, but put him on the back burner for a second. You, sure. you came in on the MAGA wave and, and Trumpism. Yeah. Um, has your view on Trump changed a little bit? I've seen some of Stu Peter's content. He looks like he's not really feeling it so much anymore. Do you have, you know, I'm not going to say regrets, but are you like, okay, I'm, I'm on that train or I'm going to vote for him. I'm not going to vote. For him. What do you think? That was hard to watch. Let me tell you something. Operation Warp Speed was hard to watch. That's that was the worst domestic watch. policy in American history. Yes. That and was that was his watch. Yep. Yeah. And thank he you for saying also that. has such a big ego. Um, that he wouldn't admit he was wrong. And his pride uh, really got in the way there. As you know, I have family mem members who are injured by it. I've had friends from high school die. 
that is a fact. It is really affecting real people. It's not just some distant aunt's father's cousins got injured. No, this is happening all around us. I'm seeing it yeah. on Facebook. Delawareans who are having random heart attacks, young people, brain aneurysms, very bizarre stuff going on. It's very real. What happened with Operation Warp Seed was horrible. However, with that being said, Operation Warp Speed was branded by Trump. It was actually passed in, uh, into law. Like they were able to do it because Congress passed it years before. So mm -hmm. this was obviously premeditated years and years before. And they kind of, I, I do believe Trump was set up. I do criticize him for not being smart enough to realize it and having too much pride to admit that he was wrong. And that is that is something that he is going to have to own up to. If he wants to earn, you know, he create like we have a lot of anti-vaxxers now in our movement. And if he wants our support, he's got to address it. He also gave uh, Fauci a platform instead of firing him. Started, wow, yeah. Fauci started bumbling that mask talk like, oh, you need one. No, you don't need him. Should have fired him right there. Get out of mm -hmm. here. You know, and he didn't. And he didn't. He was afraid to do it because of like he was running a campaign and there was all this stuff. But honestly, we I need I need 2016 Trump. That is what we need. That is what we need to take this country back. Hey, we're going to build a wall, deport illegal aliens, start locking up the bad guys and actually follow through with it. You know, and I, I think it's probably I'm coping. I'm what the kids say. I understand. I'm sure. I'm coping hardcore because I loved Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> loved him and I want him to come back and sometimes he says things where I'm like ah oh, the old Trump is back and then he gives a speech at Waco like last night and it was like all right and what happened to, where did that Trump go like you know what I'm saying so he's just right back and forth he's surrounded by terrible people like Rick Grinnell uh what's his name from Getter Jason Miller from Getter he is the most establishment data harvesting losers behind him in his camp telling him, hey, listen, it would be a great idea for you to host an LGBTQ orgy at Mar-a-Lago. Like for, he has an evangelical base, like 90 percent of Trump's voters. But are let me. I, the, OK, first first time I'll give you any pushback in the whole show. <laughs> but he is a, he was a New York liberal. Yes. For, in Manhattan, but yes. real estate. Uh, fan cocktail parties his whole life. I mean, I'm a little bit older than you. I remember when he he would sell anything cheesy pizza hut backwards crust pizza or credit cards or you know b board games like he's he's a salesman like that is the that is the art of the deal he is an egomaniac he's good at it and i'll say i love watching him own the libs because they're so annoying but like i could get that from ben shapiro you know i, I that's true it's like empty calories kind of right like you feel true. in the minute and then like it what's it leave you with really operation warp speed right it's true and you know a lot of that is the people he surrounded himself with, too. That's why I'm criticizing these particular uh, yeah. decisions that he's making, because if somebody knew his base, like I know his base, like the back of my hand, it is the mm -hmm. working class, uh, you know, the Absolutely. people that work, you know, and bring home and take care of their families and, you know, just ordinary people is his base. A lot of evangelicals, too. And the people surrounding him are advising him to do certain things like. Um, I don't know how you feel about like the First Step Act. However, you know, he made that a huge center of his campaign. Meanwhile, BLM was rioting and looting in the inner cities. It was just bad timing. It was bad advisement. It wasn't good. And he continues to surround himself with people like uh, like his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Ooh. So if it wasn't for Jared Kushner, we would have had way better immigration policies. I know for a fact I had immigration people working within the White House. They were helping me with my campaign. They were telling me that Kushner would literally follow Trump to the bathroom to make sure he didn't talk to Stephen Miller because he was trying to keep him away from his immigration mm -hmm. hardliners while they were trying to um, basically he put a hold on all immigration during COVID. He was like, no more. We're taking a break. And it was amazing. Um, but, you know, Kushner was someone who was like, oh, we're going to bring in cheap labor. We're going to open up these borders. He was a liberal as far as, you know, as far as liberal globalists go. And he was advising Trump and, you know, he just surrounded himself with bad people. And I wish Trump would hire somebody like Ted Nugent. That's that would be the ideal advisor for him, because that is the epitome of Trump's base. Like that Man, guy. I would, I would love that, too. Yeah. But unfortunately, he did. He, he brought in uh, Mike Pompeo of the CIA. He brought in yep. John Bolton. I mean, these are the worst people on the planet. So yes. it's either he just didn't know anything about it and that's terrifying or he just did what he was told and that's also terrifying it's like yeah. oh man um but he is running again even though he's not tweeting which i feel like that's really suspect if you're trying to win an election you should probably also get out advisors. there also his yeah. advisors had him sign a contract with true social he is not allowed to not yet which is terrible advice you know that terrible goes advice. to show that they were making decisions based on data harvesting and money and yeah. not what's best for trump 
So um, I'm with you. He had some, hey, he had a good message. At least it resonated with a lot of people in 2016. Yeah. But I want to get your opinion on this Trump clip because I'm not sure if this is where we need to go in 2024. Okay. You let me know. Asking everyone who sells drugs, gets caught selling drugs, to receive the death penalty for their heinous Ooh. acts because it's the only way. We don't need any more blue ribbon committees. We don't need, I don't like to say this, and I don't even know if the American public is ready for it. And a lot of my people say, please don't say that, sir. That's not nice. They kill 500 people each on. Okay. I'm going to need some receipts on that, man. Every drug dealer kills about 500. That's the average. I mean, listen, I, I'm not spring chicken. I'm pretty sure that's bullshit. Um, but I would like to see some some deeds on that. We'll, we'll keep playing. Average. And if you don't do this, in China, when I was with President Xi, I said, President, do you have a drug problem? No, 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 we don't. He looked at me like I didn't. No, no, no. That's very racist. Did you catch that? No, yes. No. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I just, him. <laughs> doesn't it, it, I'll tell you what, I think he really, he wants to be she rather than like, com the only way to compete with China is to kind of become China. Right. It, it's kind of what he's saying. He's just, I know what I was doing. He said, uh, no, we don't have a drug. How come you don't have a drug problem? He said, quick trial. What is a quick trial? Quick, I sort of knew. What is a quick trial? That's where if you get caught dealing drugs, you have an immediate and quick trial, and by the end of the day, you're executed. Oh, well, this just sounds like a great way to simplify stuff in America. The most corrupt government in the history of the world is we should give all this power to the federal government to black bag you and kill you in an afternoon. Swift justice. Yeah, good thing that this That's a terrible thing. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. I was going to say, good thing that this wasn't in place back in 2016 when I was in the height of my addiction and doing terrible things. I would have been done in one right. day. <laughs> so I was going to ask, are you, we'll stop here for just a second. Are you in favor of <laughs> capital punishment for, for all drug dealers? Well, that's the thing. No, I, I'm not. I can't say I am. I, I don't know if maybe he's talking about like the cartel people that they catch coming across the border selling the drugs. But well, how that is what they're rental? selling it at. Right. That's what they're saying. He's saying, oh, they're human traffickers and they're drug dealers. But that was the story that Nixon gave when he wanted to launch the war on drugs. Oh, we're just going to go after the kingpins. Like, no. Right. For, this was, again, as somebody who came up in the 90s. This is probably why I never found my way into the Republican parties because they were so socially tyrannical. Like mm -hmm. you gotta let somebody smoke some weed if if you want, bro. Like you own, I own my body. Um, like I'm, I, you mentioned the heroin epidemic and the opiate. This is this is a crisis. I'm yeah. absolutely with you. It's just that I'm I don't believe that we can legislate morality, and I think that the suggestion that we should execute drug dealers is pretty. I mean, that's pretty out there. Um, and I'm, I'm a little disappointed, but we'll keep I think it us. just depends on like if it's I'm telling if it's cartel ringleaders, fry them. You know what I'm saying? If you're in our country selling poison to uh, young Americans and stuff like that, fry them. But if they are Americans, I think that I, I am totally in favor of long term residential facilities. If they had dumped their money into residential facilities, getting people the help they need. It's not just talking about smoking pot. I'm talking sure. about people whose lives are completely consumed by fentanyl, heroin, drug overdoses. We're hitting 100,000 drug overdoses a year in the United States of America. And that's just going to get worse. I do believe you can legislate morality. You can, you, do. Fund, you can fund long-term residential centers that do work. There are ways you can place your money to encourage good behavior because people do respond to incentives. But how? Wh what would be the incentive for the federal government to do that? Because we see what their incentive is. Their incentive is to have people in Kensington shooting up heroin in the street, walking around like zombies, but they'll also spend tax dollars for safe injection sites if you'd rather do your heroin there. So they're going to prosecute the war on drugs while just keeping you in this stupor it is absolutely terrifying i just yep. and if you could tell me oh yeah we're only going to go for these you know like 100 people that are selling the most stuff across the world i'd be like oh maybe i guess but i still believe in the rule of law like you're yep. going to have to get a trial that's what we do here in america that's kind of what makes this 
things special. Yeah. But and you know, has... this applies to the slippery slope too. It starts with, hey, we're just going to arrest a few of the, you know, the drug dealers, and then it ends up becoming everybody. You know, they come for every right. person with like a like a little dime bag of weed on them, and then yes. oh, that applies. You it sounds like you were going to sell it to somebody, so uh, you'll be dead by this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> There's like, no yeah. such thing as a as a temporary government program, right? They mm -hmm. will ride that out just exactly. like anything else. Once you um, give them power, they do not you do not take it back that's the thing so if you give them anything just chalk it up to being gone because you will never get that right back again totally agree here he's almost done but they have no drug problem the only drug problem they have is they make the fentanyl that comes into our country and i had him stopping it <laughs> i just look this is the art of bullshit so there i was in she's office telling him hey man why are you messing with the fentanyl that's coming over my border and he was like i won't do it as long as you're president but then biden came in the fentanyl starts it's just come on i can't we can't tolerate this right it's just it doesn't feel good it's not even a good spiel yeah it feels it's, like, a, it's dangerous that's what it is it's very right. dangerous we um, shouldn't be sounds, emulating g yeah it sounds good but it's uh it's dangerous especially with you know you had mentioned what benefit is it to the federal government that people get off the streets well it sounds to me like if we have a federal government who doesn't put our best interest in mind and that is what we are dealing with it's different actually for people like china that are very nationalist and they care about the well-being of their people to a degree they are they just are they do take care of their people um you know there's they, they look also black they their nationalism. people and disappear them like uh -huh. They, yeah, that's uh, true. But they do care about their culture, like sure. their tradition okay, agreed. and, yeah, and sure. stuff like that. Whereas the federal government here kind of spits on it, hates our history, hates everything mm -hmm. about the traditional patriotic way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and it's just different governments and ours is dangerous. You cannot give them that right. You're absolutely right. And I think that probably has a lot to do with the uh, World Health Organization, World Economic Forum, the Davos Initiative. I mean, they're pretty much United Nations, they've solidified that the China model is the model. That is, out of all the countries in the world, all the governments in the world that hate their own people and oppress their own people, they're the best at it. And their yeah. people are the most grateful for their oppression, right? Yeah. So I think that that's what the technocracy has decided on. This is what we're going to, we want your social credit. We want to do this. We're going to strip people of rights. We're going to yeah. screw your farmland up over the next couple of years. We're going to dump toxic material all over your country so that we can repossess that land, turn it into a you know, a wasteland and whatever corporate building. Yeah, but it uh, wasn't China that locked me down in my home and hey. told me I couldn't go out to a restaurant without a mask on. It Damn wasn't right. China that told my family that they couldn't go to work unless they took an injection, an experimental injection. You know, it was, you know, we try to say this boogeyman China. Yeah, they are uh, like now they're partnering up with uh, Putin right now. Like they are right. forming the greatest superpower in the world right now. And, you know, it's, but they weren't the ones who were here in the United States hunting down grandmas because they took selfies in the Capitol and throwing them in prison with no due process. You know, that was our government. So we can blame China for a lot. However, with that being said, our own government has become an enemy of the people. A hundred percent. And all this stuff they're talking about with TikTok and, oh, get off there because the CCP is watching you. It's like, I would, I'm in less danger with the CCP gathering my data than I am with the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, and exactly. everybody else. So exactly. get on TikTok, everybody, and start sharing that information out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. I saw you passed, or you saw, um, looked like you were excited that Uganda passed an anti-gay bill. Is that, do you think that's good news? So here's the thing. They saw the direction of the West. They saw the end result of homosexuality. Now we have... Uh, kids being chemically chemically castrated, uh, Jeff Younger. So his son, he has a little boy. His wife wanted to, you know, transition him to be a little girl, like said, oh, you're a little girl, blah, blah, blah. Divorced him, took all rights to the child, moved him to California so she could have him chemically castrated uh, without the father's permission. That is the end result of the yeah. homosexuality. If Uganda looks at us and says, I don't want to be like that. I don't want those Western values. And they cut them off. I believe that's a good thing just because I've seen the end result of what has happened. Okay. It wasn't just, Hey, we're going to get married. No, it, it started with that. And then it was, you're going to bake the cake. I've talked about the slippery slope with my friends. Like, Oh, I did not see that coming. I wanted to, I want to go back kind of to the, to the Christians of the nineties and apologize. I was the Marilyn Manson fan back in the day. Uh, okay. um, but you know what? They were right about a lot of stuff. I still, you know, I disagree with a lot, but, um, 
I probably should have maybe led a, a, a more virtuous life. Um, go ahead. We all should have, you know what I'm saying? Like we've all, like we're all sinners. We've all done stuff. Um, I just don't think there is a benefit to American society to lift up and propped up and worship almost a lifestyle that has proven to be destructive. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people, them are suicidal, depressed. Uh, a lot of them have trauma themselves um, and need help. And, you know, we kind of glorified that lifestyle when it's not, it's a very painful lifestyle. These people are, a lot of them are in pain um, and it's very sad and I have compassion for them. However, you got did not want to start it. They just didn't want to. I think the most concerning thing is Blinken's reaction to it. So Blinken responded by basically saying they were going to sanction uh, Uganda. Basically, you have to pass homosexuality or else, um, you know, we're going to sanction you. But also they said that uh, this gets rid of all the progress they've made for HIV and AIDS. Yeah. And I was like, huh. I'm not really sure. <laughs> it was kind of like, OK, but, you know, it, that's concerning is that the United States now feels like they have to probably launch a, a proxy war in order to, <laughs> you know, make that's sure that sexuality goes. Yeah, that's the thing. And it's like, all right, well, why don't you just let them be? They made their choice. It's what they want. Everybody seems to support it over there and they don't want to become like us. And I can't say I blame them. Let them be. So I would not interfere with any other country's business. I'm a libertarian and that's cool. Um, all I will say is that. I, I find a, a, a world of difference between that father who was trying to save his daughter's life or his son's life, right, to, from, from this demon ex-wife yeah. of his. To, for yeah. butcher. Like, listen, I'm a libertarian. So most of the time when I'm thinking about laws, I'm thinking, of what, what would I be willing to put somebody in a cage for? And it's right. usually just, did they try to hurt somebody, murder somebody, rape somebody, steal somebody's shit? Yeah. Uh, other than that, pretty much like you can go do your thing. I, will, I won't recommend you enter sex work or drug use or these things, but I, I will, I will be tolerant of that. Um, but when people try and say, well, Hey, look, the kid said this to the parents and the parents okayed it. And then the parent took the kid to the doctor and the doctor okayed it. So now you have this triangle of affirmation, right? But imagine if, if it were this situation, a child wanted to date an adult and the parent said, sure. And now you have this trifecta of people who all said it's okay. It's still not okay. Yeah. It's still morally reprehensible. And you should probably, if I had my magic wand to wave, I would probably put you in a cave or in a cage before you took your child to get butchered. So yeah. I'm with you on that. I just don't think that Uganda can go, we think that gay sex is gross. So it's illegal. <laughs> like, I don't know. That, I don't know that that's going to be successful or, you know, like turn back the, the weird clock here. Um, right. but they are their own still the internet too. And they've done a good job of uh, saturating the internet with sexual content, um, you know, homosexual content, that kind of thing. So I, I don't know if it will be enough, but you know what? I respect them trying, uh, just because, I mean, I've seen the end result of what it has done to my country, um, and the nuclear family here. And I know that, you know, it ended in transgenderism and women or men competing in women's sports. Like, thank God I'm not, I played college softball. Thank God I'm not playing now because I'd be playing against a bunch of grown men yes, and we'll end would. up with a bunch of, like, it's just crazy. And it's you'd be, you'd be eighth place tops. You'd never get no. top three. Nope, they would never. <laughs> um, we're approaching the end here. Do you have two or three minutes? Yeah, of course. Okay. I want to read a couple neat tweets here are some uh tweets so check this out this just came on my radar this is from joe bishop henchman uh he was the chair of the libertarian party in 2020 until he had to resign in disgrace after trying to steal a state party and uh, all kinds of corruption quote ethan and i are in poland after spending much of the week in kiev where i was among 20 international experts invited by the office of the of president Zelensky and the government governing servant of the People Party, to advise on tax and anti-corruption reform package they are developing. So the, the disgraced Libertarian Party chair who was getting called fed, 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 fed every time he was in presence of real libertarians, mm -hmm. gets invited to the most corrupt center of the U.S. empire's proxy war to advise on tax policy and anti-corruption. I just I love is. it so much. It's I just... bet he is. You know that <laughs> right. seventy percent of that money we've sent over there is unaccounted for. Only thirty percent of it has been accounted oh, for. So it's this a money laundering. 
it's a laundering. They moved it right from Afghanistan where they could only get away with so much to the next phase for the next 20 or so years. Yep. Absolutely amazing. Uh, here's one from CNN. If you're white and you've posted a GIF or a meme of a black person to express a strong emotion, you may be guilty of wearing digital blackface. I couldn't believe it. They said that with seriousness. This is CNN.com. I, I posted so really? many black people. That's a real is, one. <laughs> and, you know, I'm going to put this up here. It actually has the, ain't nobody got time for that. They, they use that lady <laughs> to describe it. Like, you racist bastard. That is funny. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. Pretty I can't amazing. believe that's real. <laughs> that is absolutely real. Um, so here's one from Lauren Witzke. But this is uh, going back a little bit. The Libertarian Tex Party of Texas said, imagine thinking respecting another person's right to marry would just be to appease them. And you said, <laughs> LMAO, imagine being a libertarian. What are you guys, like zero for a million and 20 elections in the wins now? First of all, I just that thought that that was yeah. funny. And it was it was cool. Um, but at the bottom, you said- That was pre-coup, wasn't it? Pre-coup, I was giving pre the Libertarian Party a, a lot of shit back then too. So I can't say I blame you. And- LP of Texas uh, affiliate is one of the worst and wokest and dumbest ones. But at the at the bottom here, you said reminder the Green Party is more successful, and I just want to let you know that we're number three. Just so you know, those guys are definitely not more successful than we are. Um, <laughs> let's see. But Dave Smith said to that, we don't win that many elections. Republicans win lots and continue to sell out and destroy the nation. Are you bragging uh, about presiding over the U.S. bankruptcy? Conservatives lecturing about wins, yada yada. And you said you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love that too. I love where we can find some common ground. Um, let's I think see. he said one time he was like conservative. You can't even conserve the women's bathroom. Republicans can't even Ooh. conserve. Oh, I was like, man, owned. I had nothing this to say. Like, what are you going to say? I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're Bruce right. Jenner would have disagreed with you. <laughs> We're getting those, get those bathrooms back though, buddy. You watch. Um, <laughs> This is from you, and I really like this one, or, or most of it, I should say, before I get myself in trouble. A parallel economy is the only way. Stop supporting businesses who use the money you spend uh, with them to promote agendas and demonize white Americans in the nuclear family. Ooh. I would only just say, for all Americans. You know what I mean? Anybody can do that. I'm, I'm, I'm t but totally with that message. Yeah. Create your own stuff. Use Bitcoin. Use gold. Use silver. Barter. Trade. Uh, but would you agree face. that it seems that everything is more anti-white? I actually saw my first full white commercial with a bunch of white people on it, and it was a suicide commercial from Canada. <laughs> like, I, would you agree that there seems to be some anti-white bias going on? Not only would I agree, but I, I wholeheartedly, and, it, and but this is the, the analogy I'll use, in a police state, right? We live in a police state. Yeah. Schools look like prisons, right? You get the centerpiece so they can look over the whole guard. You know, it's, that's the model of a military police state. Ah. And I think that um, that that's going to be just part of it. I think that uh, that's going to be something that we have to deal with. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just. Yeah, I think it's like the job stuff, too, where like they are just overlooking white men in the workforce and choosing uh, people of color, like not by their wits or their grades or anything. They're just literally getting chosen by their color. And it seems that um, white men seem to be the most persecuted. I, I would agree. Me. But it, as, a, as a white man who's entering the police, the jail in the system, it mm -hmm. feels like we're being ushered to our racial camps, like yeah, in that's prison. True. That's a good point. James. So it, it feels like that, like where if you don't go with it's it's all the LGBTQ, all the communists, all the people of color and you, whitey. Like, yeah. but I don't, I don't want to feel like that. And I have lots, I have gay friends, I have black friends and Hispanic friends, like mostly white. Cause there's mostly white people in this country. Right. But I'm interested in ideas. So yeah. if you're, if you're conservative libertarian, you're down with the bill of rights. I don't care where you came from or color your right. skin. Is. I don't even care if you kiss other dudes. I don't want to watch. Cause I think that's gross, yeah. but I, but I'm, but I don't hate you. Yeah. Um, that's all. That's all I'll say as I, it's not a personal preference. It's not a personal preference. When I see it on TV, I click off. I look at my girl and I go, "What? The, why are we seeing this all the time all over the TV? So I agree with you. I just think that maybe some solutions could use a little more finesse. You drop that hammer. And that's why they come out. <laughs> but it's yeah. great. It's good. <laughs> Sorry, I get it. Um, but that's, yeah, I don't know. I do, I'm, I'm looking for that common ground. And I appreciate you being from Delaware and doing what you did and kind of taking that as far as you did and – you know, I think that you get a bad rap. At the end of the day, you seem pretty reasonable to me. And um, I don't think that you're racist, maybe a little homophobic, but that, I'm not willing to write you off for that. <laughs> you know, um, I, I think that you're that you're cool and you're doing good work. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it's been it. A real pleasure.
Um, I really, like I said, I appreciated some of the comments that you have left. I read them all the time. I'm like, yeah, he like nails it every time. So, Thanks. you know, and I, I get it. Like, you know, and people need to do more of this. We may not agree on anything. However, you didn't call for my cancellation when I said something you didn't like. You didn't call for me to be censored and have my life destroyed and sue me and do all these terrible things. No. You were open to a public debate. You're like, hey, let's come on a show and talk about it. You know, that is what America needs more of. Um, the fact that they have silenced all dissent is how they like really stir up anger. They get people mad and they cause division. So I'd like to see a lot more of this. So I really appreciate the opportunity to come on your show. Absolutely. No, no. Um, do you want to tell everybody where they can go follow you and where to watch your documentaries and stuff? Sure, absolutely. So we have another documentary coming out soon called Slave Nation. Uh, libertarians will specifically love to uh, to watch it. Uh, this guy's a real badass for sure. Um, you can watch that on the Stu Peters Network at stupeters.com. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Lauren Witzke DE, Lauren Witzke DE for Delaware. So give me a follow. I'm also, I usually um, mostly on Telegram, uh, Gab, Instagram. You can pretty much find me anywhere. Very shadow banned on Facebook, but find me on Twitter. Yep. By the way, delighted to see you back on Twitter. I got my original Twitter account back. Praise Elon until he wants to put that chip in my skull. He's okay. Yeah. In my book. Neuralink. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he does really cool things, and he does stuff like Neuralink. And yeah, he's, he's going to earn our trust, right, so he can hook us up to the old battery there. Yeah, exactly. I feel like Terminator future is closer than we think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Lauren. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Episode 46 in the books. Uh, next week, we've got an LP meeting, and uh, so we're going to take a week off, but I'll be back after that, and we'll uh, have some fun again soon. Appreciate you guys. See you soon.